Hey there. Today I got I, I got the mail and I was flipping through a, um, a catalog that I had gone of like a home catalog and I got this idea. It's like they have these uh, beautiful compositions and you know outdoor scenes and different things and I got to thinking I wonder if I could out take one of those as a reference photo um, and you know make an abstract out of it. So I did. I, I attempt, and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna just okay. I'm just gonna turn on the camera and just see what happens. So um, I, I think I have mixed results. I think it was a good experiment, and I think it was something worth trying. And so I used a very limited palette, a few colors, and of course white. Uh, you know, a dark and a light. And I used. Uh, I worked in my art journal, and. I basically did the first one. I didn't talk during it, so I'm gonna explain a little bit of it now. So I used the reference photo, which I'll show you. And then I, for the first one, and then I turned it upside down for the second one. Now, the reason I did that is everything I've learned about composition says, or I've heard, or <laughs> know that I've learned, is that if you, if it works one direction, you know, with an abstract, I suppose that should work with anything, but then if you turn it, it will, the composition will still work that same direction. So I, I was just like, okay, these are professional photographers taking, you know, these scenes, these, you know, outdoor scenes and of uh, furniture and they're trying to sell something. So they have to have composition down, right? So anyway, the first one, I was kind of really tight trying to, you know, emulate the shapes. I wasn't trying to create an outdoor, you know, patio scene. But the second one, finally I just was like, I'm just, I just kind of cut loose, went rogue, did my own thing. Towards the end I was kind of just like, whatever. So, um, but I'll be curious what you think. Like, you know, was this, is this something you'll try? Is this something worthwhile? But um, it, the great thing about it is, by the time I got to working on the second one, I was kind of like, you know, besides I was trying to copy the shapes and light and dark and all of that, but it also just got the juices flowing. So I guess it's one more way if you're stuck, if you're having a hard time getting started. Like, okay, you know, it kind of, it's another way to get going if um, you're having a hard time getting started. It's like, okay, let's just take this photo and consider it just, um, you know, shapes, not objects, not a couch, but a rectangle and so forth. So anyway, all I use a very limited palette today again, which I, I, I highly recommend, Pick, you know, your three favorite colors and white and a dark. So which could be black or, or brown or whatever. So and then I also used um, to kind of sketch out the shapes. I used a charcoal pencil at first. And I think then I later used a Stabilo All pencil because it marks through anything. I also used a um, a, sh a color shaper to kind of shape, you know, scrape on and a catalyst wedge because I'm a big fan of just like, okay, I'm just going to scrape and make marks and let the color kind of blend in. So it gets too perfect and I, I'm, not, I'm just not a big fan of it. Not that the, the, not that the, that the art is perfect, but just that it gets really, you know, rigid and I like more of a loose feel to my art. So those are the, the, the tools I use. I also use like this little tool to scratch in. I think it's like uh, something you'd find in pottery making tools and those are handy for scratching into the surface of the wet paint and then I also um, used like a one of the uh, Derwent uh, blocks the, the in the yellow ochre and then I also use a Derwent charcoal block in gray and those are just like to add some extra marks I didn't use them as much as I want I kind of got you know a little sidetracked but they I did use those so um, and the other thing is I wanted to let you know is I have realized I've been using a palette that has paint on it from prior um, projects. And then when I'm going to show you what I'm doing, it's very, uh, it looks to me in the video a little bit distracting because I'm working on top of prior colors where it's not like a plain white uh, or gray, typically, you know, a surface. So I'm, I, today I use a palette paper, which is a very affordable option. In general, I use um, just a, a, a plastic palette gets kind of layers and then I just peel the paint off and throw it away. Once it once it's dried, it, it, it peels off really easily. So I have three or four of those. But um, for these purposes, I think it's easier to kind of see what's going on when and my mixing and my process when I have a white, um, when I have a white palette, piece of palette paper. So anyway, um, yeah, it's a really fun, I think it was, I thought it was really fun and it's a great way to get those creative juices going on a day when maybe you're having a hard time or even when you're not because it's just it's fun to look at other composition um, 
you know, think professional people who are taking photography, you know, of things and try to replicate the composition, not necessarily the image. So anyway, I hope you have fun and enjoy this video and let's get started.